Before we get into today's show, I want to break the like record from last July. That was 221 likes on a video. It was on the DeAndre Hopkins signing, but which feels like it was more than a year ago, but I digress. Like the video, help us beat that record on today's show. We're starting off with some trade rumors here. Sports Illustrated pitched a possible Malik Willis trade before the start of the season for Tennessee. And there is some argument behind this. Namely, you're going to focus your development time on Will Levis. He is your franchise guy. You have already picked him over Malik Willis. He is going to get all the opportunity to grow and develop and be a huge part of this organization long term. Mason Roth is probably better right now as a backup. And with the way the NFL has adjusted their quarterback rules, you might see teams only carry two on the active roster. Although you would still need to have somebody for the rest of camp and the preseason and get through the games because you don't necessarily want those guys out there in the fourth quarter. But maybe Willis showcases something in the preseason and boosts his value compared to what he did in his brief time as a starter. I think it was pretty clear. Willis was not ready, and the flaws that were on the film at Liberty of just not taking the throw that's there sometimes, and really not being willing to attack the middle of the field at a fairly troubling rate, are still present. Maybe those get kind of phased away a little bit this offseason, this preseason, with Brian Callahan. And there were three teams that were mentioned in this SI piece as potential trade destinations. First up is the Green Bay Packers. Now, all of these teams are as backup options, right? There is Jordan Love in place as the obvious starter. The Packers have spent back-to-back -back years day three picks on quarterbacks. Sean Clifford out of Penn State, Michael Pratt out of Tulane. My issue here is you're going to get maybe a sixth or seventh round pick back for Malik Willis. Well, Green Bay just spent those picks in back-to-back -back years, a fifth technically on Sean Clifford and a seventh on Pratt. Would they add another one? I'm not so sure. Carolina was then on this list. Now, obviously, they need to get Bryce Young going after a pretty rough first season. Andy Dalton is the veteran backup. I am not the biggest fan of Malik Willis uh, from what I saw last year, like where he ranks among NFL QBs. Right now, I don't think he's terrible or anything. Well, he's better than Jack Plummer. Like, Jack Plummer is the sacrificial lamb of, all right, somebody's got to play in the second half of games. Have fun. Get hit. Uh, he's, he's not good. Malik Willis is better. But if you're devoting your developmental time to Bryce Young, how are you going to give that to Malik Willis? There's only so many reps in, in time to go around. The last team, and one that maybe is the most intriguing, is the LA Rams. Obviously, Matthew Stafford is the starter. Jimmy Garoppolo will be suspended to start the season, but he's back. At, will be back as the veteran starter. There's Stetson Bennett, who I did not like that much coming out of Georgia. Had his off-the-field issues that I think are... are currently squared away, and then Dresser Wynn, which sounds like a 1950s baseball player, which is not a good thing, by the way. I think you could argue, hey, maybe you'd rather develop Willis over Bennett, even though they did draft Bennett. My concern is this. How much interest is really going to be in for Malik Willis? You're getting, at minimum, with the way the contract's set up, two years of low floor but high ceiling backup. He's still a, develop, a developmental piece. So if you're trying to develop somebody else, uh, that doesn't make sense then. And if you have the, the veteran in place, are you looking for the low floor, high ceiling backup of Malik Willis? That's what I think makes a trade potentially complicated. And of course, brings, brings down the value. So what would you do with Willis? T for you, trade him. K for you would keep him. We'll pretend cuts on an option here. It is the pinned comment on this video. So if the ad comes on the YouTube side, that's sweet. Ignore it. Go vote T or K. Kyle Phillips as a potential surprise cut candidate. That was the uh, argument from A to Z Sports. Uh, they listed one cut candidate for each NFL team. Here's what they argued. I will make note, I did edit it briefly for, or minorly for brevity, so it all fit on the same graph. But I didn't actually, I just basically got rid of some uh, super, superlative words, which I don't think I said that right. But anyway, Phillips is buried on the depth chart by free agent addition Tyler Boyd and six round pick Jaquan Jackson. The competition for slot snaps will be highly competitive with Chalen Burks potentially getting some action there in 2024. Phillips has looked good when healthy, but injuries have made this an uphill climb to make the roster. If we are counting Kyle Phillips as a surprise cut candidate, which I don't know if he actually should count. He might just be a straight-up cut candidate. I agree here. 
I think it is a tricky path, Phillips, to make the roster, as we'll break down more in depth here. But I want to hear your predictions first. Will Kyle Phillips make the Titans roster? Y for yes, N for no. Sound off in the comments of today's video. Let's run through this wide receiver room, right? You've got three clear-cut locks. Calvin Ridley, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyler Boyd. Those are going to be your top three players. So then you got backups who, as you know, Brian Callahan has said, going to have to help on special teams. You can go back and watch. I've argued that I, I think Traylon Burks, this is even when early on in his career, I think he's going to be best as a big slot, actually. I think that's going to be his best fit. So whether he's, you know, let's say he's receiver four, right? Eh, well, maybe Nick westbrook makes it. He's got some depth piece, but he's fighting for receiver five. Jaquan Jackson offers you more big play on special team, big plays on special teams. I kind of think he's in a really good spot. I don't think you're going to carry seven receivers, especially an extra one, extra slot guy who isn't going to be a gunner on special teams. You know, NWI could be a gunner. Jackson would be a better return man. Phillips has showcased some positive things in a very small sample size over two years because of the aforementioned injuries. If he makes this team, I think he has to do it as a return man. And I think there are, or at least help as a return man. I think Jackson's better. I think Tajay Spears is better. You know, yeah, he's got not 85 punt return yards. Remember, they had the one great 46-yard punt return. That was a very fun play. That's over half his punt return yardage. Like, that's not a good thing to have the one big play and then eight returns of, eh, you know, didn't do a whole lot else besides that. So I think he does face a pretty tough path to the 53-man roster. Practice squad, though, I think you can get him down there. Now, we are getting closer and closer to 10,000 subscribers here on Titans today. So help us get there. Hit that sub button at youtube.com slash Titans today for more free Titans videos. ESPN is going through their uh, positional rankings. They consult with and, and have coaches, execs, and scouts and everything, rank players. Uh, they have gotten, they did the running backs, Pollard was honorable mention. Defensive tackle. Jeffrey Simmons, to the surprise of should be zero people in on this list. He's number four overall. Now, he was as high as number two on this list, which I have no complaints about. I do have complaints about somebody putting him as an unranked player, not in the top ten. I'll hold off on that front there. Here were the top ten uh, uh, DT rankings. We'll skip the honorable mentions and stuff. Chris Jones, number one. Remember, no more Aaron Donald. Quinn Williams, number two. Dexter Lawrence was third. Jeffrey Simmons was four. Justin Matabike, five. Christian Wilkins, Derek Brown, DeForest Buckner, Kenny Clark, and Javon Hargrave rounding out that top ten. So Simmons fourth on the ESPN list. Where would you rank him among all the defensive tackles across the NFL? Sound off for me in the comment section of today's video. For me, at least... The top four are not that far apart. However order you want to rank Chris Jones, if he has the veteran experience there, that's fine. Age is, I think, going to become a bitter, bigger issue slightly as we move forward a little bit here. But Quinton Williams, Dexter Lawrence, Jeffrey Simmons, those guys are superstar defensive tackles who are young, who are worth every penny they're making, who I think are game wreckers and game changers on the interior. So you want to put him two or three or four, that's fine. I have a tough time putting him not in the top five. That doesn't make sense to me. And sorry, whatever scout, coach, exec, if you exist, who didn't rank Jeffrey Simmons in the top 10, you should lose your job. Uh, you're just, you just don't know what you're watching. I'm sorry. There's no way you can put Simmons not among the top 10 defensive tackles. Did he miss some time last year? Yeah. Is he the biggest stat sheet stuffer? No. Is he disruptive? Is he productive? Is he that team's best defensive player? Actually, their best player? Absolutely. Simmons is one of my favorite defensive tackles to watch in football because he's constantly impacting the game against the run and against the pass. And the injuries have been an issue, sure, but uh, this is what one NFL scout said. When he's focused, sets out to make a lot of plays, he's pretty much unblockable. I think he'll have a big year similar to Justin Matabike in that same Baltimore scheme last season. Now, as a reminder, by the way, the uh, production from Justin Matabike last year in that new Ravens scheme was 13 sacks, uh, which, if you're not good at math, is an obscenely high figure for a defensive tackle. So, yeah, I am all in on a massive year for Simmons and continue to look like a you know, first or second team all pro 
defensive tackle as he's been before. Been to the end of today's video. Thank you guys very much. And I hope you all have liked it. So if you haven't, make sure you do that right now.